Okay, everybody. This is a little bit unusual for me. I don't usually do uh, video tutorials on this sort of thing, but I thought that the best way to show you this trick that I learned in Capture One was to kind of put it together in a video for you. So I'm going to detail out the steps uh, for the blog post, but I wanted to give you an idea of, of how quick and easy it is to uh, whiten teeth in Capture One using the local white balance adjustment. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is an image that uh, I've already made some of my adjustments to. One of the cool things about Capture One um, is that you can create a new variant that will give you the option to have an, uh, a duplicate version of that image with no adjustments on it. So you can start from scratch, try a few different things, and then flip back and forth between the two to compare uh, which one, see which one you like better. So the first thing I'm going to do, just because it bugs me, is I'm going to go to the Rotate tool. Uh, I'm going to use the Straighten tool, and I'm going to just straighten this out based on what I know to be a vertical line in this window in the background. And what the Straighten tool is going to do, it works just like any other Straighten tool in any other program. It knows that that line should be pretty much straight, and then it rotates the image and creates this crop. Um, so that that image is not straight. It's still not quite exactly right, so I'm going to go into the, the freehand rotate and I'm going to kind of turn it back a little bit to where I think it looks better and it's somewhere about there. So the first thing, or this, I guess the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my overall white balance for this image. It was a really cloudy day. Things came through looking kind of blue and uh, just not in general very... Um, attractive and so I want to go a little bit warmer and so I'm going to go over here to my white balance tool in capture one and I'm going to select from the presets I'm going to go to daylight which as you can see that actually kind of takes any warmth that was in it out a little bit um, so the next one down which is going to increase that Kelvin value is going to be cloudy which is a little bit too warm I think I ended up somewhere about 5800 in the Kelvin and evening the tint to zero. Um, the tint you can slide around and kind of see what you like. This goes a little bit more magenta and over this way goes a little bit green. I think zeroed out is pretty much where I want to be here. Alternatively you could grab this eyedropper tool and use it to select a neutral point in the image. His sweater is certainly not going to be the most neutral thing but white balance can be pretty subjective so you might want to just kind of click around until you see a point that looks pretty good. And actually, um, maybe somewhere in here looks okay. It's a little bit green for me. Uh, I think what I'm probably going to do is stick with those values that I knew to be where I wanted it, which is probably about 50, we'll call it 58.50 Kelvin, and we're going to zero, zero out that tint. So the next thing, you know, maybe we're going to go 6,000 on that. With that tint zeroed out, I think 6,000 might be the right place to be. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of these exposure adjustments. It's a little bit underexposed for what I want just looking at their faces. And I think about one to two points of exposure, maybe just one point is going to be kind of where I want to be. Um, I'm not going to mess with the contrast right now, but I am going to increase the saturation. I'm going to bump that up to about 10. And that's going to give me something that I think is starting to look pretty good. We're starting to see these colors in here come through a little bit better. The one problem that we have here is going to be in their teeth. Uh, we warmed this up so much that now their teeth are looking really yellow and that's kind of a problem. I know these people uh, and I know that their teeth don't actually look this yellow in person. So whereas I think I, you know, I might be happy with the way that my skin tones look and I'd be happy with the way that these other colors look, um, this isn't the most attractive, uh, this, this isn't the way that I know them to look. So what I discovered in Capture One, as of version 8, um, we have the ability to do white balance as a local adjustment. Um, and what I've discovered is that that is a really useful tool for simply and easily um, whitening and brightening teeth in Capture One without having to pull the image out of Capture One and take it into, say, Photoshop. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to go over here to my adjustments tool tab and I'm going to add another adjustment layer. I'm going to call this layer teeth 
and I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool and I'm going to go in, zoom in about 400% there onto their teeth and I'm just going to paint myself. And this works really similar to uh, like a, a mask in Photoshop or some other tools is essentially what happens is on any of these adjustment layers you have this option to paint a mask and those adjustments on that adjustment layer will only be applied to the area where the mask is painted. And probably a better way to show you this, specifically how that white balance tool works, would be to step out here and I'm just going to paint a big section of this uh, with a mask. So the mask looks like this, pretty similar to Photoshop, and that area will is the only area that will be affected by any of these adjustments that I make on this local adjustments tool tab. You can tell that at the specific tool that you're working with is only affecting the adjustment layers or the layer that you have selected because you can have multiple layers. Uh, because it's got the little paintbrush next to the name of the tool. If you're not seeing that paintbrush next to the name of the tool, as in here with this exposure tool, that's affecting the entire image. Whereas this exposure tool with all of the same tools in it with the paintbrush is only affecting the masked area on whatever local adjustments layer you have activated. So to illustrate that, we painted this area out here. If you want to turn on your uh, mask to see what it always looks like, you can turn on always display. That kind of gets in the way sometimes, so I keep that off and set to only display mask when drawing. So as I change this slider and I increase the warmth or decrease it, you can see it. the white balance is only being impacted in that specific area that I have masked. So I'm going to go up here to my erase tool. I'm going to erase that mask and I'm going to go back in up close and personal on these teeth and I'm going to draw a new mask on that same layer. I'm going to reset the adjustments here in the white balance so they don't look super crazy just by clicking this reset uh, icon here and that'll reset any adjustments on that back to what they were or back to their uh, default value. So activating my brush tool and we're going to definitely want to reduce that brush size. Uh, the beauty of this is it doesn't need to be super exact when you're drawing your mask. Um, you really can get kind of sloppy with it. I kind of work in circular motions here. Um, I try to get as much of the teeth as I can without going over too much into the lips or gums if I can help it, but you'll see the effect is so subtle you're not going to really have a big issue with your uh, mask being very troublesome for you. Um, if, uh, going back to what I said a minute ago, the effect is really it is subtle but I find it to be very effective in just kind of improving uh, the general feel of your images without it being incredibly obvious that you've done any editing or retouching on them at all. Uh, I didn't like where I kind of dipped into his lip here, so I'm just going to use my eraser tool, erase some of that, and bring some of that back in. So I've got his done. I'm going to move over to Mom. We're going to draw the mask in here. And same deal, you know, trying to be fairly accurate, um, but not being concerned with pixel point accuracy in drawing this mask. I probably could use some of the auto mask tools in Capture One to pretty good effect here. In general, I don't, I just don't really, I tend not to use those kinds of tools. Um, I don't do a ton of retouching. If I did a lot where time was of the essence and it would save me a lot of time to do stuff like that, I might, but in general, Oops, got a little bit of an errant run there. In general, I don't too, do too much of it, so I'll, I'll just stick with using the actual brush tool. So, here I am, and what I want to do now is I'm remembering back to when I had set that white balance to daylight, and that looked really cool, and so that might actually be where I want to start for this adjustment layer to bring their teeth back to some something that looks a little bit more white. So I'm going to go over here to daylight, and you can see right there, 
night and almost a night and day difference. If I hold down the alt key and press while I'm holding down that key, press that revert button. As long as I have that revert revert button pressed, um, you'll be it'll temporarily revert the adjustments on in that tool so that you can kind of tog, toggle them on and off to see what they look like. And you can see there's a big difference there. The problem here is now they look kind of gray and kind of weird. So that's not going to really work for me. Um, what I know from messing around earlier with this is I want to be somewhere about 5200 Kelvin um, and looking at mom's teeth maybe even 54 and that's putting me somewhere that feels much more natural. The other thing that I can do since I'm in here and my mask is already drawn if I wanted to increase the exposure to kind of brighten them up a little bit I certainly could do that. You could also increase the brightness um, probably go about 10 points. Mm, that's a little too much. So I think we're going to go five points there just to give it, you know, a little bit of brightness to it. We can go up here and we can turn that layer on and off and see all of the adjustments that we started. And as I back out of this, you'll be able to see that while it's a very subtle difference, it's very, very effective in making these this picture look a lot better. And more importantly, keeping this image in Capture One, whereas this is something that I would have done uh, probably in Photoshop, or would have done all of my editing, and then dropped in, or all of my uh, adjusting that I do in Capture One, and then dropped it into Photoshop to do that editing. This is certainly something that you could have done with the color editor, or color balance tool here in Capture One under a local adjustment. Um, what I found is that using the white balance and to a lesser extent the exposure tool, gives you a much faster and much more easily repeatable uh, version of this uh, effect, which is to whiten and brighten these teeth in Capture One. I hope you found this uh, useful. If you have any questions, absolutely throw them in the comments, and I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. And thanks for taking the time to watch this.